In this video, I'll be breaking down the workflow and techniques used to create the alien environment you just saw. I'll be using PureRef, which is a free program for gathering and organizing images, Unreal Engine for creating the overall scene and for the final render, Blender, which is an open source 3D modeling program, and Quixel for some materials and meshes, which are free to use within the context of Unreal Engine 4. There are no particular skills you need. I think anyone who gets comfortable with the workflow and program should be able to create a scene like this. The important thing is to try to get faster using the tools and shortcuts and focus on the end result rather than getting stuck in trying to make the details perfect. You can use any image editor or just save images to your desktop, but I found PureRef to be a handy and lightweight program to quickly organise images that you want to reference. You can copy and paste or just drag and drop images into PureRef, resize them by holding Ctrl, Alt and left clicking, move them around with the left mouse button, and you're given an unlimited canvas to organise the images how you want, and then you can zoom in with the mouse wheel to view the images in full quality. When looking for reference images, I found it useful to add concept art to the search term, especially for non-realistic environments. So for example, searching alien environment concept art in Google Images. This helps to find images that are well composed and polished rather than screenshots from movies or games. You're not trying to find images that are an exact match for what you're trying to create, but just things that serve as a general reminder for the overall vibe or specific elements you want to use. So for example, I found images which have a lot of fog, which I'll use to help sell the distance of objects in the background. You can also use the reverse of this process to look for common elements in the images you've chosen. In this case, most of the images have one overall colour theme, then a contrasting colour to highlight specific features. This image is set in a cave and not really the type of environment I'm making, but I've included it as a reminder to add a neon style water pool that will stand out from the rest of the scene. In Blender, I start off by creating a rough base mesh for the scene, in this case the floating island the camera is on. Starting with a cube, I'm selecting individual faces and extruding them out using the E key until I have an approximate shape for the mesh. I use ring cuts using the default shortcut Ctrl R to add loops of vertices around the mesh to keep the polygons roughly the same size and to add more points I can use to adjust the shape. An important thing to remember if you're trying to create organic shapes when starting with a cube is to adjust edges to avoid too many 90 degree angles to make it look less cubic. I'm selecting faces underneath to move and extrude down to make it look more like a floating rock so that I can reuse this same mesh elsewhere in the scene where the camera will be able to see the sides. I then add a subdivision modifier to add more polygons and smooth out the mesh. I'm not applying the modifier at this stage so I can still make changes with the simplified cube version whilst previewing what it will look like when smoothed. You'll want to select the mesh in object mode, right click and choose shade smooth. When you've made the basic mesh you should import it to the engine to see how it looks in context to check it's scaled how you expect and to check for any issues. To create the basic environment in Unreal Engine, I'm starting a new level and selecting the time of day template and deleting the objects I won't be using. By holding Ctrl L and moving the mouse, you can adjust the sun position, which also impacts the lighting of the scene. Then it's just a process of trying out different settings and colors for the light, clouds and fog. Because this is supposed to be an alien environment, I use some more extreme values than you'd use if you're trying to create a realistic scene. I tried to position the sun in a place where it would be visible and cast rays through the cloud when the camera is pointing upwards. To enable god rays, you tick light shaft occlusion and light shaft bloom in the details panel of your directional light and adjust the settings. You can make further changes later, but once you've got an approximate look for the environment and sky, import the mesh to see how it looks in the scene. You can add in the default mannequin to get a sense of scale of the scene, and decide if you need to resize the mesh before moving on. In Blender, if you apply the subdivision modifier to the mesh, you can then switch to the Sculpting tab and begin sculpting in more details to randomize the surfaces to make them look less uniform and to further refine the shape, in this case to make it look more like rock. You can adjust the radius of any of the sculpting tools, but I find it quicker to zoom in and out of the scene so that the tool has a wider or narrower influence without having to constantly change settings. You can hold shift to smooth areas or control to invert the tool. 
There are many tutorials that cover all of the sculpting tools in more detail, but for a simple shape like this that isn't trying to look realistic, you can just try out the different brushes for yourself and see what works best. When looking at the reference images, I remembered that I wanted to add a pool of water, so I began sculpting in the rough area. I also wanted to have an overhanging rock where liquid would drip down into the pool as an excuse to add some dynamic elements to the scene with particle effects. Make sure to regularly re-import the mesh into UE4 to see how it looks in the engine. In this case, I noticed some of the mesh was in shadow, so I adjusted the sun position to make sure the areas I wanted to be highlighted were visible. Also, the overhanging rock wasn't perfectly aligned with the pool below, so I made adjustments to the mesh. If you enable the soft selection option in Blender, any changes or movements you make to your selection will also influence surrounding vertices, which is useful for moving large chunks of the mesh around without creating any sharp angles or intersecting polygons. Once you're happy with the sculpted mesh, you'll need to add UV seams before adding materials. Again, this is an entire topic in itself where you can find tutorials that dive as deep as you want into the process, but the headline version is you're trying to map a 2D image onto a 3D object so you need to place cuts where different pieces of the image will join together. You want to put these seams in areas where they will be less visible, for example underneath or around the sides of the mesh rather than on the surface, so that you don't immediately see the texture abruptly switching to different parts of the image. You also tend to want to place these on sharp angles so that the image doesn't have to distort to wrap around the mesh. In Blender, switch to Edge Mode and select loops around the mesh by holding the Alt key and clicking on any edge. Then right click and select Mark Seam. When you've created seams around the mesh you can select all faces, right click and choose UV Unwrap. Switch to the UV Editing tab to see if you need to add or adjust any seams to avoid distortion. The goal is to have as few seams as possible whilst having the polygons all share roughly the same density of the 2D image. Depending on the scale of your scene, it might help to select all of the UV islands and scale them up or down to increase or decrease the density of the material. If they're scaled too small, the material will be stretched and appear to be low resolution. If you scale it too high, the material will repeat more and there may be visible tiling of the texture. You may want to adjust this after creating and applying a material to the mesh in the engine. Quixel Mixer is a free program for editing and combining Quixel materials. I'll leave links in the description to some tutorials that go in depth on how it works, but if you've ever used Substance Painter or even just image editing software like Photoshop, the interface will be self-explanatory. All you need to do is select different materials provided by Quixel and combine and adjust them to create the look you're going for. In my case, I used a combination of rock and sand materials and adjusted the colours so that they blend in with each other and look more like an alien planet surface. You simply download a material from the Online tab, drag it into the Layers tab, then adjust the threshold and colour settings to blend them together. When you finish creating your material, you can export this to your Quixel library and use Quixel Bridge to import it to Unreal Engine. Or alternatively, you can export the texture images and manually create the material in the engine. Once I have the material applied to the mesh, I often open the console and enter the command r.tonemapper.sharpen space 4. This adds a sharpening pause process filter, which makes the scene look more crisp and accentuates details. Whether or not you use this in the final render or game is up to you, depending on the style you're going for. I then imported two rock meshes from Quixel using Quixel Bridge that I will duplicate, scale, rotate and move around the scene to add more detail and to hide the simplicity of the underlying sculpted base. I applied the same material to these rocks so that they blend in with the island mesh. Alternatively, you could adjust the colours in the rock material instance to match it with your scene. Because the meshes from Quixel are from real world scanned objects, they don't always have polygons on the underside of the mesh so it's important to position them in ways that hide the edges. Get familiar with the shortcuts you use for moving objects around so that you can quickly add lots of meshes covering the scene. Try to scale and rotate each one so that it isn't obvious that you're reusing the same mesh. You could also import other meshes and apply the same process to add more variety. You want to mainly focus on the areas where the base sculpt looks too smooth or looks unrealistic, primarily on curves or places where the silhouette is visible. Surfaces that are mostly flat aren't as important because the material is able to sell the depth and detail of these parts, but you should still use meshes to break up the material so that there aren't any obvious repeating patterns in the texture as well as to cover up any visible UV seams 
try to get familiar with the shortcuts you use for duplicating, moving, scaling and rotating objects so that you can quickly try things out and cover all of the environment. This part of the process is about adding an overall level of detail. No one is inspecting the individual meshes and judging how well they're placed, they're just seeing the scene as a whole. In Blender, I created a 2D plane to use as the surface of the pool. I added a light into the scene to give the effect that the glowing liquid was lighting the surrounding environment. For the liquid, I created a translucent material and reused a texture from the ground material and multiplied it by an emissive colour. I then played around with offsetting the UVs using time as an input so that the liquid will look to be moving and distorting. To make the edges of the liquid less sharp, I added a depth fade node plugged into the opacity channel so that the liquid plane would fade out around the edges where it intersected with the surrounding mesh. I added some rock meshes underneath the island and then duplicated the entire island and placed copies of it in the distance. I tried to rotate and rescale them so it wouldn't be obvious that they were all copies of the same mesh. You could also spend some additional time to create different island variations. I then added a landscape to the scene and painted in some basic mountains to use for the background. There are various tools you can use to create more realistic landscapes, but in my case it would mostly be covered by fog and only vaguely visible in the distance. I also scaled some island and rock meshes to create more detailed looking mountains that were more visible. The rest of the process was just a case of adding in details, often just simply reusing particle effects I'd made for other projects. The steam coming out of the pool was originally a bullet impact effect that I adjusted to spread it over a larger area. The fish in the pool were taken from an experiment I did with animating GPU ants within a Niagara particle system. If you zoom in, you can see they are actually just ants walking about under the surface of the liquid, but from above it creates the illusion of fish or insects swimming around. This effect was made using a blood spatter decal from Quixel and adjusting the material to make it emissive. I reused the steam particle effect from the pool and also added a purple light above it to light up the nearby rocks. These organic breathing rock things were made as a skeletal mesh in Blender by sculpting a base mesh then inflating and expanding it for a morph target. I made a blueprint that interpolates the morph target value along with blending the material from a rock to a skin looking material created in Quixel Mixer. I also reused this on one of the islands in the distance to add more movement in the background. This is just a simple particle effect with an emissive material and light. These floating things were from another project where I experimented with making a plasma globe in Niagara. I found that when it moved around it looked like some kind of alien jellyfish so I added a few of them into the scene and gave them some randomised movement with a blueprint. The spiky monster at the end was again just a GPU particle system. It uses a mesh renderer with a basic low poly mesh and I added various movement and noise modules to make them float around semi-randomly. I adjust the colour of the life cycle of each of the meshes so that they would sometimes be glowing an emissive colour. There are links in the description for the different topics covered and the resources used. Let me know if you would like to see more breakdowns in this format or more in-depth step-by-step tutorials for any aspect of game development.